Hi, it's been a while since I recorded something last time. That was about Docker containers. I will get back to that series as well. But today I'm sharing something that I write about in my newsletter from on LinkedIn. Uh, and it's basically things I picked up during the work week. And today it's about JSON and JSON in SQL Server. Uh, we have been able to query and parse JSON data in SQL Server since SQL Server 2019 uh, and in SQL Server 2022 we got some new functions for it. Today we will only look at the open JSON function which we have had for a while. And the open JSON function gives us the possibility to query into a, a JSON document and uh, pick bits and pieces out of it and create a tabular result set from it. So we will switch over to Management Studio and I will just run a short demo and I hope you enjoy it. So we have a table, let's drop it. Uh, we have we created, it's a customer table. Uh, it's very simplistic, it has an ID. A customer name and it has some customer contacts and the, the story behind it is when we get that information we don't really know the structure of it we just need to store it, store it all we know is that we get JSON from a service with customer contact details so we just store them in the table and then we figure out how to query them so create the table insert a row or Transmocopter SQL AB. That's my company. Uh, and some contact details. And the contact details are, as we can see, JSON. It starts with a bracket, so that means it's an array. And the array contains elements, this one and this one. So we will examine them. And see that okay this element is a JSON document it has the key ID the key name the key title and the key bones bones has the value of an array and that array has the elements this document and this document and each of these documents has the keys purpose and number so now we know enough to write a query against the customer table and try to dig out the information from this json document so let's begin by just using open json on this column for this data select and we will just start with a select star and see what we get back star from customer with alias c and then we use cross supply to cross apply to the open json function and what we send in to the open json function is the customer contact from the customer table and we need to assign a, val um, a derived table name to this uh, the result of that function so let's call it root it's empty that's not at all how I intended it maybe I didn't do my insert it's much easier to query data if you have it in your table actually uh, so the ID, the customer name, and the customer contact, these are columns in my customer table. And the key, the value, and the type, these are uh, results from the OpenJSON function. So the key, 0 and 1, well, since we're working with an array, an array contains elements, but each of these elements doesn't have a key because an array is just an, an it's an array of 
things and the things in this case are JSON documents. So OpenJSON will assign a key to each of these elements in the array. So zero and one. The value is a JSON document. So we didn't get very far, uh, but don't worry, we, we will get there in the end. Uh, we have split the array uh, into rows. So each element of the array is now a row. And we can continue working with OpenJSON to get into these documents that, that, that we get back. The type, that is a JSON type. And JSON type 5 means it's uh, a document. JSON type 4 means it's an array. So if we have an array inside a document instead of the other way around, we would get back a 4. For yeah. That's just how it works. Anyway, we want to break into this document. So we will use another cross apply to open JSON. Cross apply open JSON. And this time we will send in the value because that's the name of this column value from this derived table root of value and we will give a an alias name here let's call it um, customer contact detail and now we get these are still from the original table these are from the First, cross apply to open JSON. And these are the next ones. So, ID, the key named ID has the value 1 to 3, and it's the data type 2. 2 means it's a numeric. Name, Magnus Alkvist, data type 1. 1 means it's a string. And down here we have an array with the JSON type 4. Good, but I don't like that I get back a column with the name key. I would rather have a column named ID uh, with a value one to three. So we can do that using the with clause. So to the second open JSON call, we smack on a with clause with. And here we will define that we want to have the key ID as a column id and we give it the data type int we want to have name and be careful uh, because json is case sensitive so if you get auto completion like me name and it, it's capitalized then if it's in lower letters in uh, in the document, then it should be lower letters here. Uh, data type and var car hundred. How long are names? I don't know. Uh, my name is shorter than hundred, so we use hundred. Uh, title and var car hundred for the title as well. And we want to have the phones uh, as well. Let's call, give it data type and var car max because I don't know how long the array is. And we need to give an alias and that has to be defined after the with clause. So now it should work. And it kind of works except the phones is a null value. And that's because uh, we could see that the data type or <laughs> excuse me fantastic all right i'm back uh, we could see that the json type was four and four means it's an array and an array i mean you can't assign just take an array and put it into an NVAR car max uh, because they're different types of beasts. So, but if we just add 
as JSON after Envar Car Max here, uh, then SQL Server is going to figure out okay, you do want that array uh, Envar Car Max and, and we want to treat it as JSON. So give, give us back some JSON basically in an Envar Car Max. And now we get the fonts. But these are not very useful either because it's it's still JSON and we want to have a tabular result set. So just another cross apply. Cross apply uh, and this time open JSON again, of course. Uh, and we want to get from this derived table the bones. And even here we want to get uh, a column with a name purpose and another column with a name number. So we use the with clause again. With purpose, what data type, and var car 20, and number. It doesn't have to be an nvar car if it's a number, right? I mean, it's a phone number. Uh, let's use var car 20. And then we need to give an alias name to this drive table as well. So, phone numbers. What do we get? We get purpose and number. Fantastic. And now we're not going to do a select star. We have done the exploration. And now we're ready to finalize our result set. So we want to have a customer dot ID as customer ID, customer dot customer name, and customer dot put nah, that's all we need, right? The name. And the ID from the customer table, and then we go into the, into whatever we got back from the open JSON functions. So this derived table, customer contact detail dot name as customer contact name, not customer name. These are the contact people within that customer. We want to have the title. And uh, we'll call that customer contact title. Why is it red? It's not red anymore. Cool. And what else? We want to have uh, maybe the ID, but I don't care about the ID, this one. So we skip it. Uh, but we do want the phone numbers dot uh, purpose as phone type. And phone numbers dot number, of course, as phone number. Let's see if we get a nice result set back. We do. We get the customer ID, we get the customer name, customer contact name, customer contact title, the phone type, and the phone number. So, with only using OpenJSON and a with clause. We have gone from this to this, and we can do whatever we want with it. Probably what I would want when I'm done with the exploration, I know exactly how a customer contact record looks like. I would create tables for it. and, and uh, insert the data into real SQL tables. Um, but it, it's really nice to be able to dump the data in and then figure out how to query it. Uh, if you really, you know that, okay, this service that holds these, uh, these details is gonna be discontinued, so we need to store it. And then we can put them in a database table and we're able to query it. I hope you enjoyed this short video. Uh, I haven't been very productive with videos lately. Uh, I might get back to it. I have this idea that I will record a demo for the weekly SQL tip for my LinkedIn newsletter. 
So if you if you're curious what that newsletter is, then just uh, find me on LinkedIn and uh, it's Magnus Alkvist, A H L K V I S T. Uh, find me on LinkedIn and you will find my newsletter and uh, you can subscribe to it. In the newsletter I will also present the, the next speaker for SQL Friday. Thanks for listening, thanks for watching, drop a comment if you liked it and subscribe to the channel if you want to get notified about future videos. See you later!